Hey guys! Welcome to the Shoe String Congress, or the SSC as we've been trying to call it. This is uh, a really great week because Robin started the discussion on movies and television, the state of them and the industry and everything, and how it's kind of warped and weird right now and hard to deal with. Um, and Dave had a very good comment on it yesterday, which was a very good video, David. And now I'm going to comment on it. And the first thing that they talked about was, uh, at least, uh, yeah, I think at least what Robin talked about at first was reboots and sequels and not original content in Hollywood anymore and how that's kind of annoying. And Robin, let me just say that it is annoying, but you have to know what you're addressing because a lot of reboots, okay, and, and sequels and things like that are bad. Okay, let's start off with Twilight. Ugh, let's move on to something else now. My mouth feels dirty. <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean. We don't need more of them. We didn't even need the second and third one, you know? The first one was so good just by itself. Just leave it. Nope. They want to make money. What's next? Transformers. <coughs> let's move on. Let's move on to something else. Those were like modern sequels and stuff like that. A good example of a reboot of an older movie? Red Dawn. We don't need Red Dawn. We don't need it. Why? It was so good. It was so good. Is Jennifer Grey in this Red Dawn? Is she? No. Jennifer Grey like made that movie for me at least. She's so pretty. She's so just darn pretty. She's not even in the new one. And she's old now. She's doing other stuff. Or is she dead? Did she die? I should probably know this. I'm a fan of hers. But move, but see that that's what I'm talking. Those are like those are the bad ones, you know. But hold on, there've been some good ones, Robin. You may fail to remember. I wrote this down. Twenty One Jump Street. Have you seen Twenty One Jump Street? That's an example of a movie that like pushed a TV show past where it was. Twenty One Jump Street was a great television show. Don't get me wrong, it was great. Every episode had a really, really, really good like moral lesson that you had to learn. It was like, okay, it was like Power Rangers, but like, for adults. Okay, remember how much you loved Power Rangers when you were a kid? It was awesome, right? Watch 21 Jump Street, because it's such a good show. Find it somewhere. They sell the DVDs at Target really cheap right now. It's really good. I recommend it. But what Jonah Hill did is he took it. And he, like, changed it, and he made it something, like, totally different. And a lot of purists are like, oh, man, he totally ruined it. Man, it was like a self-aware comedy. Get over it. It was supposed to be like that. Obviously. And it was really good. I laughed really hard. I saw it in the theaters with my mom. We both loved it. It was awesome. So that's an example of a good one. Some other ones, um, James Bond. You know? Where are we going to be if we don't see a James Bond movie? I hope James Bond stays around, like, forever. It's like an institution. It's like a cinematic institution that just needs to keep happening. Why? Because it's awesome. Because it's James Bond. It's like, what if Indiana Jones just kept happening? That'd be great. But it didn't. So now we're stuck with three of them. Well, four. No. Mm, no, we're stuck with three of them. I'll say, yeah, I'll do that. I will say that. Um, Carrie. I'm actually really excited for the Carrie reboot. Because. Because it's Carrie. Damn it. You know what else I'm really excited for? Is the new Evil Dead. Here's why. Sam Raimi's producing it, or he's writing it, and Bruce Campbell's producing it. And when the first Evil Dead came out, it, it really it pushed visual effects for the time, at least a little bit. Like, the stuff that they did with, like, people dying and getting cut in half and arms wriggling around and the whole, okay, controversial... Of course, but the tree rape scene. What the fuck? How did they do all that? It's an, It was insane. Of course, now when you watch it today, it's not scary. You know, it's corny. Because it's old and the effects are terrible. But that's why I want a reboot. is because I want to see it terrify me again. You know? And the, the trailer for it looks horrifying. It looks like everything looks so gross and bloody and just how it's supposed to be. You know, it's Evil Dead. It's Sam Raimi. It's nuts. I'm very excited for that. Um, again, you guys are talking about Star Wars. That's another big one that I'm, I'm really excited about because it's Star Wars. Come on. It's almost like James Bond. And here's another thing. People that get pissed off about sequels and reboots, Star Trek. Boom. 
drop the mic. Star Trek was awesome. And it deserved a reboot, and it got one. And everyone was happy about it. Who didn't like the new Star Trek movie? I know that people make fun of it, and they call it, like, lens flare of the movie. I'm guilty of that, too. That's what I do. But you know what that movie's... That movie kicks ass. It really does. And now, movies... Like, sequels and reboots aside, there is some good original content there, too. In the indie world, you have a lot of, like, hidden gems. I'm not going to go all into them because there's, like, billions of them. You just have to find them somewhere. It's nuts, though. Check out, like, Sundance lists or something like that. A lot of those are funded by, like, Fox Searchlight or something. But uh, you can find some really good movies in there, for sure. Um, but some studio originals? Uh, Jumper. That movie was awesome. Did you guys see that? What else? Argo. I just saw Argo. I thought it was amazing. It was a lot of... It was, it was a good movie. It was really good. I like Ben Affleck movies. The, like the ones that he directs and stuff. Really good. Um, Cloud Atlas. Now here's the thing about Cloud Atlas. is based on a book. So technically it's not an original content. Which is the thing. People get like mixed up about that. But it is a little bit more of a risk because the book isn't like super well known. But... Wachowskis, they can pretty much, I don't know if they can just do whatever they want, but there's actually, no, they can't. There's very, very, very few people who can just do whatever they want in the world of film these days. But, I mean, I don't know if I said it earlier, I'm pretty sure I did, but studios are scared. They're scared. We had an economic collapse. You know what the, one of the first things to go was? Theaters. Like, theater, like, people going to the movies. You know help kept, you know what helped keep that alive? 3D. 3D is helping keep movies alive. So all these, like, freaking purists that come down, like, oh, 3D sucks, it's such a gimmick. You know what it's doing? It's keeping, like, the studios alive. I know that people don't really like the studios, but you're going to have to, like, put up with them and deal with it. Because they do churn out a lot of bad shit. But like Dave said, bad shit's been getting churned out forever. You know? And But... 3D is helping keeping them alive. They're keeping them afloat. Otherwise, Disney would own all of them. <laughs> you know? If it wasn't for 3D, they'd all be getting, like, super poor, and then we wouldn't have... I don't know. We'd have even less good movies. But, um... Let's go on to the state of television. Now, American television... Robin, I don't know what German television is like. I hear, I hear it sucks from what you said earlier, and I'm sorry about that. But in my opinion, television has been getting awesome. I mean, think back. Think of a, think of a good show from, like, the 70s. Can you? I'll give you a minute. Do you have one? If you do, I'm very proud of you. If you don't, welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. It's so hard to think of an old, really good TV show. I mean, you have your classics like M.A.S.H., Wings, uh, Cheers, uh, I Love Lucy, stuff like that. But those weren't the only shows on at the time, were there? No, they're content all the time. Shows all over the place. And guess what? They probably sucked. The, but history doesn't remember those. You know what they're going to remember? It's Breaking Bad. Mad Men Lost. Stuff like that. And here's uh, some here's a list of some TV that I think is really good. Uh, I said Mad Men, Breaking Bad. Uh, AMC also had a show called Rubicon. It got canceled because of bad ratings. It actually it went toe-to-toe -to -toe with The Walking Dead on the same network. Because they only had budget for one of those shows to run that season. And they tested the ratings. And Walking Dead, of course, did light years better. Um, but Rubicon was a really good show about espionage and, um, like, code-breaking and spy stuff. It was a lot of fun. Uh, they also had The Killing for two seasons until it got canceled, and that was a really great show. Quick picture, that's based on a book, The Killing. Also, The Walking Dead is based on graphic novels. So everything's based on something. You have to get over that. If you guys are like, everything's based on a book, you know, get over it. Just get over it. Um, what else? Game of Thrones, that's based on a book, but that's a really good show, too. And I know Dave just had a thing about reality TV, and I'm going to say to Dave what I said to Robin. There's a lot 
of stuff that's bad, Dave, of course. The Kardashians. I don't even know what Honey Boo Boo is. Apparently it's reality TV. I, have, I actually have no idea what it is. That's probably bad, though. From what I hear, it's stupid. So I'll put that in there. Um, you know, stuff like that. But there are some reality TV shows that are really good. Really good. Off the top of my head, I can think of one. But it's blown my mind. There's two seasons of it, and it's on Netflix, and if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. It's called The Colony. And you should watch it. It was on Discovery. I don't think they're going to make a third season, but I really hope they do. Also, I hope that I'm in it, because I'd love to be in it. That, that show blew my mind, and it still blows my mind. I love it so much. So I think the television's getting a lot better. I mean, I'm getting a lot more of, like seasoned, like, movie actors coming into television. Like, Homeland. Claire Danes is in that. Claire Danes is a hot name right now. Um, even, like, the dumb shows that, you know, networks just try and spit out and, you know, go for it. Like, Heart of Dixie has Rachel Bilson in it. I love Rachel Bilson. You kidding me? I saw the pilot of that show and it actually wasn't bad. I haven't kept up with it because I don't have a TV. What else you got? Um, jeez, let's think for a minute. Okay, Breaking Bad, of course. Brian Cranston. Um, he has been in so many movies since Breaking Bad starting to blow up. You know, he's he was in uh, he's in like three movies this year, I think two or three movies this year. <laughs> the man's everywhere right now, and I don't know. I think that I think that TV, I think that maybe because Hollywood is doing a lot more reboots and sequels these days, a lot of the, um, maybe some of the, like, big-name actors are like, you know, I'm kind of sick of this. Let's do television, because at least I can have some, like, long, drawn-out, good character development. And that's probably good. But here's something that I really like. I know Robin touched on video games and how people can get, like, indie games can get funded, but I don't talk about, like, studio games in, in the video game world that are, like, redefining shit. The first one that I like to talk about is um, Rockstar. Rockstar Games made L.A. Noir, and uh, it's it's part of this uh, movement into performance capture that video games have started to do. Um, and L.A. Noir uses use like actors, you know, and their facial like recognition stuff that they had for the faces of the characters in the game were so good that you're like a detective, right? And if you're interviewing someone, you have to look at their facial expressions to tell if they're lying. Like, it won't be in the tone of their voice usually, but it's like in their face. And that's like a whole new game. It's like a whole new ballpark for video games. And that's really cool. So Rockstar has been actually using like actors instead of just voice actors and having the computer people figure out what emotions to do, because computer people don't know what emotions will get displayed on someone's face. So it's really cool how actors are coming in and doing this. Another big one is Naughty Dog. They did the Uncharted series, there's three of them now, and they're fantastic. They are so cinematic. It's ridiculous. And a lot of people are like, there shouldn't be an Uncharted movie, because Uncharted is a movie. And, you know, I kind of have to agree with them there. Even though it would be cool to see Nathan Drake on the big screen, but... I don't know, the games are just so good as they are. Another one I'd like to talk about is Quantic Dream. This studio... I've only, they, I've only played one of their games, and it's hands down one of the, some of the best storytelling I've ever seen in my life. The game that they made that I played is Heavy Rain. That game is fantastic. It's unbelievably good. I can't even believe it. Just the drama and the character development and, like, the flaws that these people have and the choices they have to make and the things that are at stake. It's just it nuts. And they're making a new game called uh, Beyond Two Souls or something like that. And Ellen Page is in that video game. She's She stars in it. She's the girl. It looks like her. It sounds like her. It's Ellen Page. Um, of course, she's playing a character, but it's almost like it, it's like she's in a movie. Like, she had to act out all these parts. And it's sort of fantastic how that's... How that's, like, what's happening now is that actors, and not just voice actors, but actors, 
are playing parts in video games. And that's really cool. I like that a lot. I'm like all about that. Um, that's all for my notes. I think. So I guess to summarize, yeah, movies suck. You know? But you know what? There are some really good original stories that are coming out. They're not based on anything. It's just someone has a passion project. And they're doing it. Something that comes off the top of my mind is Pacific Rim. By Guillermo del Toro. It's coming out next fall. <laughs> I'm so excited for it. It's going to be great. I think it's going to be really great. Actually, Guillermo del Toro is really good at original content. He did Pan's Labyrinth. And, um... Well, before that, he did, you know, some sequels and stuff like that. But, man, that guy's cool. Guys, there's always going to be sequels. There's always going to be things based on books. There's always going to be things that are rebooted. What you have to do is that when you when you see something bad like that, something that's, like, kind of terrible, you just have to realize that not all of it's bad. Some of it's really good. Seriously. At least I don't think so. Um, I feel like my train of thought was, like, way off today. Ugh. Anyway. Uh, Cecilia should be going tomorrow. If she doesn't, no big deal. This is, like, we've had a couple off weeks, so I guess I can forgive her for that. Um, next week we should all be here. Hopefully. I hope. I think. I really do hope so. Um... But, until then, thanks for showing up, and thanks for watching. And, um, if you like the discussion, subscribe for more of them, if you want. We don't have very many subscribers right now. Hopefully we will someday. Even if we don't, it's fun to talk to each other like this. Uh, anyway, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.